All right, if you're new to algebra, this is gonna look much harder than it is. It's not so bad. Basically, what this comes down to is the strategy I've been, you know, championing all along, plug points into equations. We clearly have an equation, right? With J of X equals MX plus 144. It's standing in the center of the, uh, the question for us. Um, but it might be less clear that we have points. And that's because we are in function notation, which you might not be familiar with yet, but basically it's a way of talking about X and Y without using x and y. So the key piece to start is this. This is a point. And if you watch some of the other videos earlier from this section, you might have heard when we have this piece in parentheses, that's kind of like an x. Notice, right? It's in the same spot as the x in the original equation. So that's good. So what that tells us then is my x coordinate is 12. And then maybe just through process of elimination, it's kind of like the y coordinate is 18, right? So what they're saying here is when we take x as 12 and put that into the j equation, when we solve that, we're gonna get that it is equal to 18. And that kind of functions like a y. And I know there's no y here, but it, it, you still wanna think in terms of x and y because that's how the xy plane is outlined. It's, it's all part of math, right? X's and y's are kind of the fundamental piece of algebra. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna plug that point, 12, 18, into this equation, and, and we've got three things that are missing. So the x is easy. Let's plug the 12 in for that x there. So uh, that's gonna give me m times 12 plus 144. The 18 is the thing that people are gonna have trouble with. Basically, out of habit or just like simplicity, you might want it to go in place of the m, but we don't know the m, and that's kind of what we're trying to find. Instead, the 18 is gonna go on the left side. It's not going in for the X, it's not going in for the J. It's going in for the whole thing, J of X, because that's what Y is. You might even see this on a lot of questions that involve function notation. They might tell you just explicitly, Y is equal to F of X. It, it, it's basically just a shorthand for what I'm saying, that when we use function notation, we're, we're kind of like changing the way the Y looks but it still functions the same way. It's still kind of like its own thing. And so here it's called J of X for whatever reason, but it's still the same. It's behaving like a Y. 18 is our Y value, the Y coordinate of this point. So that's gonna go in for all of that stuff on the left. So now if I put that in, I can see that I've got a pretty simple algebra situation here. I have one variable missing, this M. Now I know they don't ask for M at the end, but this is a good example of why plug points into equations is such a powerful strategy. Sometimes it just gives us something to do and it's almost always the right thing to do. So our goal here is like, well, I've got this M, I don't know it, but I can solve for it, so let's do it, right? So the first thing I might do is just rearrange so that, that that 12 is in front of the M. That's just good good form for algebra as we wanna have our number, our coefficient in front of the variable. Then we're gonna go through germdas, and when we do it, remember, we're going backwards. We can't simplify this anymore. We can't do 12M plus 144 because the M is getting in the way. So now we have to go backwards. And so the first step of getting M alone is to, to do addition subtraction. So we see this 144, we've gotta make it go away. So we're gonna move it to the other side through subtraction because 144 minus 144 is zero. So this side cancels out. On this side, we still have 12M, but now we have 18, 18 minus 144 is negative 126 on this side. Just use my regular calculator for that. Now we've done the addition subtraction, right? Think about that M again. What is, what's getting in the way of us just knowing what M is? Well, this 12 is there now, but 12 is not attached through addition or subtraction. That's attached through multiplication, right? It's 12 times M. So now with going backwards through Jimdas, we need to get rid of multiplication and the way to do that is to do its opposite, division. So we're gonna divide both sides by 12. And when we do that, we're gonna get rid of it because 12 times 12 is, or sorry, 12 divided by 12 is one and one times M is just plain old M. And then 126 divided by 12, this is gonna be messy. So negative 126 divided by 12 is negative 10.5, okay. And that's not our answer, all right? That's not our answer because we don't want M. They want J of 10. So this is actually asking now for the Y coordinate of a second point, okay, a second point. So we can get that though. We just need to kind of go back to our starting point. What was our main strategy? Plug points into equations. Now we have the full J of X equation. It's negative 10.5 times X plus 144. Because notice what they said originally, M is a constant. 
That means that M is a specific number, but that number doesn't change. Once we have it, it's the same, right? So that's why I'm able to just plug it in, even though now we're gonna use different numbers in X and Y, we're going to have the same value of M. And that's really what a lot of algebra comes down to as well, is the difference between a constant, a number that is, that is the same all the time, that we might not know it, but we can solve for it, we can find it, and once we do, we're good to go, versus a variable like x, like y, like j of x. Those are things that vary depending on what number we want, right? So here, they, they changed it on us, right? Originally, they told us x was 12. So we did a lot of stuff using that. But now they're asking for what happens when x is 10. So we gotta change it up. So now we're gonna do what they say though. j of 10 means we take the x and we substitute 10 in place of it. Now we just have to do arithmetic. We just need to solve. Again, we can use germdas, but now we're going forward through germdas because notice there's no variable on that side anymore. There's a variable on the left side. I'm gonna use y here because I've been talking about it so much. So the y is now kind of what we're looking for for the x that is 10. So we have a point. We only have half of the point. We're solving for the other half. So we, this time we go through forward. There's no groupings. There's no exponents or radicals, but there is multiplication or division, right? Negative 10.5 times 10. We've got to do that first. So that is y is equal to negative 105 um, plus 144. So we do this in our calculator, but multiplying things by 10 is not so bad. So negative 105 plus 144, that's all, the addition, that's all the multiplication and division. So now we can go to addition and subtraction. And depending on how you want to think of this, you could think of it as addition, right? Negative 105 plus 144, or if you wanted to, you could think of it as subtraction, 144 minus 105, right? Because we can kind of rotate numbers when we're doing addition and subtraction as long as we keep the sign with the number, right? So negative 105 becomes a minus 105. So 144 minus 105 is 39. Whew, that's our answer, that's it. Now I know that that feels like a lot. Um, the reason I'm going into so much detail here is my assumption is if you're taking this test, which is a ninth, an eighth and ninth grade PSAT, you are probably very new to algebra and this kind of stuff is new to you or maybe you've never even learned it yet. Um, but it should get easier. The goal would be by the time you take an actual SAT, you don't need a five minute, seven minute explanation for this, that this is a 30 second question. It is obvious to you that 1218 is a point, you're plugging it in, you're solving for M kind of robotically, and then once you've got that, you know that it's gonna work in the equation no matter what values of X you have, so now it's easy to just substitute that in and use the new value of X, 10, to get the value of Y that they want. So a lot of, a lot of very fundamental things are going on in this one question. Question, but I understand that if you're in eighth or ninth grade, these are very new things to you. So just try to make it a point to get comfortable with this. It's going to keep coming up in lots of questions and in lots of math classes in school.